Hi everyone and welcome to a brand new one-off video voted for by my patrons and YouTube members. Well, first of all, I want to say a massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support and for voting for this video. And what they voted for this month was to create a curved HUD effect. So in this episode, we're going to go through how to create a curved HUD similar to what you see in FPS games such as sci-fi shooters like Halo and you get that simulated effect that is on the helmet. So let's get started and jump straight in. So the aim of this is we're going to take this 2D flat UI here that I quickly mocked up and we're going to make it look like it has some sort of curved or parabolic effect, make it look like it's part of a helmet. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to close this for now and create a new material. And we'll give this the name of curved effect. And what we're actually going to be doing here is using this inside of a retainer. Now, a retainer inside of a widget is basically like post-processing, but for widgets. So what we're going to be doing is using this to affect and change the UVs for the whole entire screen. So let's go into here and turn this into a UI domain, first of all, like so. So to make a almost like a post process effect for a UI, you need to first of all make an input parameter for a texture. So we'll create a texture sample here and we're going to just right click on this and convert to a parameter. And we'll call this one UI texture. This end result will go into the final color and we we'll also have an opacity on here too. Um, so let's change that to a translucent and put alpha on the translucency. Okay, so obviously you get an error, that's because it's blank. Let's give it some basic texture. It doesn't really matter what, because it can get overwritten by uh, our widget anyway. Something like this. Okay, that'll do. Okay, so the way this works is that we've got to take the texture coordinate and manipulate it. So let's first we'll get the texture coordinate we need to use. And in here, I need to separate the X and Y coordinates separately. So let's mask this out with a component mask. And this one, we just want to get G on its own. And we'll do another one, get R on its own. Because we're only bending it in one direction, um, we only need, we need to separate these two out like so. Okay, so now we have to do some complicated math with this. So the texture coordinate, let's open these up so you can see how this works. You can see how the G coordinate here is taking the vertical space of the gradient and the R is this sort of um, uh, horizontal space here. We're going to manipulate these together and then combine them later on. So let's take this and mess about with this. So first thing I want to do is I want to multiply this top value for G by minus two. And what this will do, if I multiply by minus two, you'll see it get flipped and, well, you won't be able to see it flipped because it'll go too dark, but then the values are flipped around. Okay, so it'll be a negative value there. So if you think about the value going between zero and one, if it times one by minus two becomes a negative number and negative is represented by a dark value. Um, we then want to put this into a multiply. And this multiplier is going to be affected by the red channel here. So we're going to multiply the G value here by this R value. Uh, we're going to multiply, first of all, the R value by itself in a negative. So if I do this and subtract from there and subtract one from it, and see how this looks as we go along. Again, these values are going to go into a negative value, so we're not actually going to see anything. Um, but trust me, it will come together when we put it into the multiplier here because we've got two negative values being multiplied together. And as we know, two negative values make a positive value, so you get it back to what we want. So what we're seeing here is we're seeing this parabolic effect now occurring in this multiplier. Okay, It's almost like it's combining almost two of these together. Okay. Okay, so there is the main effect that we have. Uh, we then want to create a distortion amount. So how much we're we going to apply this to our actual UV coordinates here. So we're going to make a scalar parameter and we're going to call this one distortion amount. 
and we're going to multiply it by this value here. So this is how strong the curve is going to be. So zero, it's not going to do anything. Um, one, it'll look like the full thing. Uh, we'll set the default value of this though to 0 0.3. This has been a sweet spot that I found in the past. Okay. Right, so next, <clears throat> we need to determine our uh, if value. So on the UI texture, this UV coordinate space is handled by what should be normal and what shouldn't be normal. That's the main job of this work, is it? What part is curved, what part isn't curved? But some parts of the screen will look normal, whereas others will look a bit bent and, and, and curved in. So we need an if node to determine what parts are going to be curved and what parts aren't. So put that in the UVs. And the bits that aren't are going to have their normal texture coordinate. So nothing special, just use this one. And that one will be used for A is less than B and A is equal to B. And then we are going to make this A, uh, sorry, this A is greater than B, B in append. So we'll bring that into append, uh, append vector. And what we're appending here is the uh, coordinate space that we have here, this distortion here. We're going to be adding this to our current texture coordinate. So if I take this here, and again, we will need to mask this. I can just take these two. And put that in there. And put that in there. So now I've got these two again. Uh, if I add the R here, to uh, not R, sorry, the G, because G is vertical, curve in the vertical. If we add that to our apply here, okay, you get a, a less strong looking thing here. Um, but what you want to do then is clamp this value so it doesn't get any too, uh, anything too much in here. So we're going to do clamp. And that's just simply between zero and one. Okay, so it just keeps the values in that range because we need it to be between zero and one for our texture coordinate to work. Otherwise, what we will see is it duplicating and replicating the uh, texture coordinate over and over and over again, which we don't want. We don't want to see tiling UI because as it bends, if you think about it, if it bends, something's got to fill that void. If we don't clamp it, it's going to fill the void with more of the texture, which we don't want. Okay, so we need to append this now together with our R value. So let's bring that down here. And we'll put that in the append there and that in the append. So this is our distorted UV. This is our normal UV. And we need to now determine what one we're going to use. And that's going to come from our distortion amount. Drag that across to A. So, and that's it. Now you're not going to see this working until we go back into our widget. But let's recap what's going on here. The first part here, we're just getting a parabolic effect in its full glory. So we're doing all sorts of crazy stuff to it to make it uh, bend its shape. So what ultimately we're doing is we're combining these two together, but multiples of each other. So this one you can see here, we've got dark on one side, dark on the other side, and this one's still dark on top, and we're just combining them together, like so. Um, we're then multiplying it by the distortion amount, so how strong would the bend be? And then we're adding that to our vertical space. If we don't do this, it'll be way too strong. You'll see some weird behavior. And we can experiment and show you that behavior. And you can see it in action. Uh, and we're then adding this all together um, as a clamped value as an option. And then it will choose what parts should be bent, which parts shouldn't be bent by the use of our distortion amount. So anything that is above 0.3 in value. So basically the bits at the bottom will be bent. It's the top won't be actually what it's doing. Okay, so we apply this, and we now want to put this into our heads-up display. So in the heads-up display, we need to wrap the whole entire thing that we want to be bent by a retainer. So we'll wrap with retainer box, and in our retainer box, you'll see over here our effect material. This is that post-process effect that I was talking about. You just whatever you have inside of the retainer box will be affected by this effect material. So let's put that in there. Curved effect. And here you'll see texture parameter. This refers to the texture parameter that has been affected. This one. So UI texture. Chop that into there. 
UI texture and compile and save that. Now, when you're in editor mode, you won't see this uh, effect in place. You only see it during the game. So let's add a UI to the game here. We go into my first person blueprint, into the HUD, and on begin play, let's add that widget. With create widget and choose a head of display, and then we're going to just simply just add that to viewport. And now you can see that curvature of the map. We see that bits at the bottom are more curved than the bits at the top. So you notice the HUD at the top isn't that curved, um, but the bits at the bottom are, and that's because that 0.3 value. If I change that, we're going to see less of a bend because the bits at the bottom won't be as bent and the bits in the middle won't be as bent. So let's tweak that and you can see that in action. Uh, code effect. I change this down to, uh, or change it up, sorry, to 0 0.6. A larger proportion of the screen will be kept normal. Oh, sorry, larger proportion of it will be less normal. <laughs> It'd be more bent. There you go. And do it the other way around. So 0 0.1. You see it's less curved okay and that is how we do that parabolic effect and this is something you would use quite a lot if you want your character to look like they're wearing a helmet um as it gives the impression of something being projected onto a heads-up display on say a helmet or other device and there we have a completed curved hud effect and by means experiment with the different numbers that we used inside the material to get different effects just experiment with them and you can see for yourself the different effects that you could have on your HUD, all thanks to the retainer box. I want to say again, massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members voting for this video. If you too want to vote for next month's video, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lally or click join just below here to become a YouTube member. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.